Hi, welcome to the bathtub. Scott Bradfield, the old masturbator. I've been masturbating since I was 12 years old, but I didn't get really good at it until I was 13 or 14. Uh, this this uh, episode, we're talking about Lucky. Don't come here. Don't do that. I'm trying to stop her from licking her. She got allergies. Don't try not to do that. And uh, we're uh, we're going to talk about. We talked about a little bit about the Library of America last week. And this is probably my oldest volume from the Library of America, the Stephen Crane. A dish. It's a bit torn up and beat up, but and it's a little worn a bit. But it's kind of a great volume because it has not only all these uh, obscure and difficult to find stories of his work and unfinished work, but his uh, poetry and all his poetry and all a lot of the essays and a lot of his journalism. It's a kind of a cool volume if you're interested in Stephen Crane, which many people may not be. Stephen Crane was one of those writers when I was a kid. You were supposed to read the Red Badge of Courage about the Civil War. And I never quite got into the Red Badge of Courage, and I always found it a little boring for some reason. And uh, then, I guess in the past 20 or 30 years, according to Paul Auster, who's written this really interesting biography of, of Stephen Crane, according to him, nobody really reads the, uh, the Red Badge of Courage anymore. And, uh, and he seems to think that's, that's not right. That's not, probably not right. And he's probably right. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk. This book, I read this book and really enjoyed it. I wrote, wrote an essay about it. I'll, can I post a link to it below? Lucky, can you come up here and say lucky yourself? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You wanna come up? Come on. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on up. No, don't do the growling. This is this is the ugly side of Lucky. This is she growls, she gets very upset when she's told not to do something. She's the worst trained dog in the world. That's all I can tell you. Poor Lucky. Anyway, try not to lick your, your paws. Anyway, so uh, we we're, we're doing I wanted to talk about this book. Burning Boy Paul, by Paul Oster. It's the life and work of Stephen Crane. It's a big book. It looks like it might be really boring, like a big, giant biography, but it's not a critical biography, which sometimes those are really boring. Okay, But uh, this is a, it's a personal, it's like a personal, pleasurable reading of Stephen Crane. It's like Paul Oster really likes Stephen Crane, which you don't always feel. When you read a, a big critical biography, you don't always feel like the writer is like loves that writer and just wants to spend time with him. It feels like a responsibility in a way and they're doing some sort of critical or academic work. Um, Paul Oster has obviously loved Stephen Crane since he was a kid. And they're both from New Jersey. So this is the interesting part about it. He, he sort of writes... Paul Oster was uh, was born in a fairly close, I guess, to where where where, um, where Stephen Crane was born and raised for the for, for first part of his, his life. And... Uh, so he kind of obviously made that connection with him fairly young, and he spent most of his life reading him. And this book is not just a biography, and it's a really good biography. I read a couple others in the past. I completely forgot them altogether. I don't remember reading them or anything about them, but I did read them. I think I reviewed one or two. But this one I have to say I enjoyed all the way through because he takes an approach to, to, to Crane, which, is, which I think more people should do, and I have the feeling that more people will do in the next next decade or two. Because um, most literary biographies, are, again, they just feel really kind of dry and turgid. Um, I remember it reminded me a little bit of a much shorter book about Walt Whitman by Mark Doty, a wonderful poet that I did write a piece about ages ago. And uh, it, was, it was not just about his, uh, Whitman's life. It was about Mark Doty's affection and relationship with these books. And, like we all have these relationships with these writers. And Mark Doty wrote very well about growing up with Walt Whitman. And uh, that's basically what uh, Paul Oster does with his volume. Um, I wanted to say just a few things, so I'm not going to talk too much about these. I would I really recommend The uh, Burning Boy by Paul Oster. He does something I haven't quite seen before, which is he basically reads through tons of Stephen Crane, not just the famous books like Red Badge of Courage, but some of the lesser-known books like George's Mother and Maggie, A Girl of the Streets, which are really, really powerful. But I find much more interesting those books than I do uh, uh, Red Badge of Courage. And I also love The Monster, which is a very, very strange and horrific, horrific and beautiful book in many ways. And a lot of the short stories, the famous stories, I remember reading as a kid, and I never quite got them, but I reread things like, you know, uh, The Bride Comes to Yellow Sky and The Open Boat, which was based on Stephen Crane's own experience as a shipwreck survivor, and about the feelings of this this character as he's trying to get back to shore and try to save his life and the kind of fantasies that go through his life his, his his head it's really the quality that's 
the most strange and interesting about Crane is the way he gets into his characters in these really horrific naturalistic worlds of war and survival and, and just and just being poor in, the, in, the, in in really horrible parts of New York and the and Manhattan and and, the, and and cities. And then the interiors of these characters are filled with hope and optimism and a sense of beauty and that horrible continuous frustration of all these beautiful impulses inside these human characters it's a it's a really compelling writer very unusual very modern sort of writer i guess if that means anything and i'm really glad that paul oster wrote that book to make me go back and read it so um this one volume is really quite good to get i had never read his poetry before i had heard him quoted many times it always looked a little too kind of you know um beat like beat poetry to me and he wrote a lot about war, which he had seen some of, particularly as a journalist. He's, there's a book in here, which I actually did read when I was working on this piece, called War is Kind. It is, it is a brutal, a scary picture of the horrors you see in wars, which, which Crane watched. And, you know, the, the, the fact that these idiots in, back in Washington are back in their countries and their, their leadership sending these people off to these horrific, horrific uh, pains and agonies and suffering and he's filled with a sense of outrage at everything he sees and he writes but he writes some really incredibly funny moving pieces and they are filled with that irony that war is kind war is war is going to be very nice for you uh, i want to read this one little passage uh, so um i i went oh, i did go back and read the red badge of courage and i still kind of find it kind of boring so if you're put off by the Red Badge of Courage, it's got some great passages in it. It is has got some great writing in it, but it doesn't really hit me with that immediacy of Maggie's uh, of the short of the great short stories like the Blue Hotel or, or, or the Open Boat. It doesn't hit me like the George's Mother, which I which really does hit you. George's Mother is a little bit like Fight Club. It's about a bunch of these drunks in uh, in some urban area part of New York. Uh, I don't remember it's Brooklyn or Bronx or something. And they, they go to this bar every night and they just get drunk and beat the crap out of each other because there's just there's nothing else in their lives. I'll read a very short passage that, uh, that, that Oster quoted at the beginning of his biography. And it kind of hooked me. In the desert, I saw a creature, naked, bestial, who, squatting upon the ground, held his heart in his hands and ate of it. I said... Is it good, friend? It is bitter. Bitter, he answered. But I like it. Because it is bitter. And because it is my heart. It's a very haunting little passage. Uh, I knew that line from, and that passage from a, a Joyce Carol Oates book, one of her better novels, actually, from years ago. She used that as a title, Because It Is Bitter and Because It Is My Heart. It's, a, it's actually one of her better books. Um, there were so many things about Oster that I enjoyed, and, and again, the long, the long periods that Oster spends with these, these uh, books and stories and journalism, where he just basically reads them and exper explains what it felt like to read them and what he saw in them, how he felt when he was reading these pieces. He doesn't do any literary critical stuff at all. He does nothing. He doesn't. Anything. He doesn't try to explain why it's good or bad. He just says, "This is how it affected me." And I really think that's that's basically all we try to do here, to a much lower, lesser degree than than he does in this very big. Obviously, a lifetime of reading and, and writing about this guy, and uh, I, I do I do recommend it highly if you if you like if you like biographies of literary figures it's it's a very good one and it's about a person's enjoyment of that that writer. Okay, I don't want to say much more than that except uh, Crane is Crane is cool. I like him. He's he's not he should just didn't just read him in college, and you should definitely try try George's mother and uh, Maggie, a girl of the streets. If if you didn't cotton on to his to his uh, other books, okay. Happy bathing. See you soon.